let's say there was a fire and you had to choose between saving your own child, which I doubt you have, but let's pretend that you do, and saving a black child that's not yours, which one would you save? Well, first off, you know what they say about assumptions. It makes an ass out of you yeah. and me. But in this case, yeah. just you, because I would save the black child first. Devil's Advocate. With Skylar Turden. All right, welcome to Devil's Advocate. I'm your host, Skylar Turden. Uh, today we'll be talking with a guest about uh, you know, the hot topic of abortion. Before I came on the show, I actually had um, some trail mix, and I don't know if I've caught my tooth. Is it cashew? It's like a, like a filbert? I'm not sure, but it's a problem. You know, they should have a warning on those, uh, on those packages because yeah, it's going to stay with me all day. Sorry. All right, uh, so our guest to talk about this issue, uh, I guess you've seen as an authoritative figure, uh, on the right, as it relates uh, to the topic of abortion, she released a film that I believe she uh, she produced, directed, starred in as well. Unplannedfilm.com, um, former director of Planned Parenthood, uh, a while back. Abby Johnson, thanks for being with us. Well, thank you so much, Skylar. So I want to make sure that people understand this. Um, you talk about. Uh, abortion quite a bit. You consider yourself, I don't want to mislabel you, pro-life, anti-choice, one of them. Yeah, I'm pro, pro-life. I mean, I'm definitely for choices, so I'm not anti-choice, but, um, but yeah, pro-life. Okay, so you're not anti-choice, so uh, you support a woman's right to choose then? Yeah, I definitely support a woman's right to make choices mm -hmm. uh, with her pregnancy, as long as that choice doesn't infringe on the rights of another human being. Right. So you would support her choice to uh, terminate a pregnancy if need be? Uh, no, because that choice would then infringe upon the rights of another human being. How's that? Well, um, as far as I know, and as far as science claims, uh, the, the fetus inside of the womb is a human being. Well, how are we to find that? Uh, I find it... Uh, by the way, I'm very uh, delicious that you're uh, now um, obviously sort of referencing science. I believe this is you know, the right people who have, well, well, we'll do climate change another day. We'll have someone else on there to talk about that. But um, why, why are you defining that as a human being? Because you use the word fetus, right, and human being separately, and then you use them interchangeably. A, a, a fetus is not yet a human being. I'm wondering then what you think it is. What What species is it? Is it like canine or feline? No, this is, the, this is the thing that people on the right do, and they say, oh, a fetus doesn't turn into a dog. It doesn't turn into a sea otter, you know, whatever it is. Um, that's not what I'm saying. What, what I'm saying is that we put different value in different stages of human life all the time. You know, it's not yet, even I would say the same thing if it's a whale. A fetus in a whale is not yet a whale. It's a potential whale. This is effectively a zygote could be seen as a parasite uh, by scientific definition to use uh, the people who you love to give credibility. Um, but it's not yet a human being. Why do you think that it is a human being on par uh, with requiring the rights that are seen from someone like you or myself? Yeah, I think, I think that science would disagree with you um, because DNA has already, the DNA of that fetus, embryo, zygote, whatever you want to call it, is human. DNA and it, it's not anything else. It can't ever be anything else. So is DNA what defines a human then by your definition? I mean, yeah, science defines it that way. Yeah. So if I do that and I scrape off some dead skin cells, that's, I mean, that's DNA. Is that, is that like mass genocide right there according to the world, <laughs> according to Abby Johnson? <laughs> no, no, that wouldn't be mass genocide because your skin cells um, are not living human beings. Well, they're potential living human beings, just like a fetus, right? That's where we get into this ground of everyone has a line. Apparently, yours is at skin cells, and mine is at uh, mine is at you know a woman being forced to carry a pregnancy. Could you send me an article, Skylar? About um, I'd be interested about any sort of research where skin cells have been turned into a, a human being. Okay, so that, that this brings us on to the further point. So it's for you, it's the potential to be a human being that makes one a human being. No, it just is a human being. 
Okay, but then we get back into this, this wordplay. It's not a human being yet. It's potential to be a human being. So I, I want to understand, I mean, because right now, let's, let's, let's deal with the actual human being who's there, the mother, right? Why are you so vehement in denying the choice to the mother who is living, who is sentient, who has a, a whole uh, lifetime of experiences, memories, emotions? Why are you giving the right of way to a potential human being? So is for you sentience, that's what defines a human being? Well, I think it's a part of it, yeah. Does that not for you? No, not at all. Why not? Well, I mean, would you say that someone who's in a vegetative state is not a human being if they're not sentient? Well, they, to use your, your sort of metaphysics, they have the potential to come back from that, right? They were a human being already before that vegetative state, pre presumably. So then what are they while they're in the vegetative state? Uh, they're in flux. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're in flux. But I would be okay with pulling the, you know, I, we can go back to Terry Schiavo. That's a whole different topic about euthanasia. Um, I think that people should have the right to do that, especially if they're seriously causing harm to those uh, around them who are being forced to support someone who no longer has the ability to take care of themselves. So I think that my point of view there is remarkably consistent. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I find it to be completely unscientific, Skylar, actually. And... I mean, I got to tell you that embryology textbooks would disagree with you, physicians would disagree with you, and, and actually I think that the pro-choice movement would have a lot more credibility if they would just come out and admit that abortion is terminating a human being. Um, in fact, you know, uh, Dr. Leroy Carhart, who is a very infamous abortion doctor, uh, he just recently said in an interview with the BBC that he is killing a baby when he performs abortions. And as as terrible as, as we might think that is, as, as pro-lifers, I at least have some sort of respect for him for admitting what he's doing. So you said physicians would disagree with me. Are these the physicians who fired you unceremoniously from Planned Parenthood? Oh, I wasn't fired. No? No, why don't you tell the story behind that? Sure, yeah. Um, I ended up leaving Planned Parenthood on my own free will um, after witnessing, well, a few things, actually. One being- Free will seems to, important to you. Yeah, something that we can get circle back to that. Free will is also something that makes a human. But yes, go back to your uh, termina sure. termination there at uh, Plum. Yeah, um, so I was told to double the abortion quota that we had at Planned Parenthood, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. the number of abortions that we had to sell to women. And uh, ultimately though, I ended up leaving after witnessing a, a live ultrasound guided abortion where I saw a 13 week old fetus uh, attempting to, to move away from the abortion instruments. And I, I knew then that, that life did exist in the womb and that I was on the wrong side of this debate. Right, and so that's when you left and had a lucrative book deal and, and film deal, but that's a topic for another day. Um, you talk about free will, obviously. Um, why does that matter if, the, if all that makes up a human being is, is DNA? I guess my question here is, if you say that it's a human being, uh, are you saying then that abortion is, in fact, like the people with the signs and the chopped up baby parts, do you believe that abortion is murder? Well, I think right now, with murder is a legal term. So I don't think that we can define abortion as murder right now. Um, because abortion, unfortunately, is legal um, in the United States. However, um, the hope then for us as pro-lifers is that we would make abortion illegal and therefore abortion would be seen as murder if abortion were to be illegal. And so what would you do at that point? Would you jail every woman who's uh, exercised their choice to terminate a pregnancy? You mean retroactively? Yeah. No. In fact, that's against the Constitution. So we're not allowed 
um, to do that. And actually, I, I, I'm not a person who um, says, oh, well, if abortion becomes illegal, then we throw women who have abortions in prison. I think that we have to look at intent. Um, most women do not go into abortion clinics with the intent of maliciously killing their child. Uh, you know, we live in time where society and pressures around these women are causing them to feel like they have no other choice but to have abortion. So we definitely have to um, look at intent in those situations um, because women don't have abortions alone. There's many different women, there's many different players um, in a woman's decision to have an abortion. Yeah, but I mean, that's, in any other scenario, right, intent might uh, affect the severity, the degree of the murder. But uh, it seems to me that if you're saying you make it illegal, women would have to go to prison because there's nowhere else in uh, the current legal system that I'm aware of. Maybe you can correct me uh, with some references to science here, or um, I assume you're a legal scholar as well, uh, where people, it's, it's reduced to manslaughter. You know, even if sure. someone didn't intend to. So I don't, I can't think of anywhere else where someone who would be involved in the decision to abort a baby where they wouldn't be legally liable. It seems to me that if you do that, women would have to be jailed for this crime. I don't think they have to be jailed. I think for me, I think that, um, that, that women are, many women are truly victims of our current society and the culture of death that we live in. Um, and so I think that you have to look at different situations. I think that, you know, we could be talking about an issue of, of manslaughter over being charged with murder. But, you know, we don't know how that's going to all shake out. We haven't even overturned Roe v. Wade yet. So, um, but what, it's, what do you, what do you say yet? Is that, is that your goal? You say yet. Is that what oh, you Oh, sure. It's one of them. Yeah. Really? So you would want to overturn sounds to me, from what I understand, you're more conservative, but you would want to overturn what is recognized as a constitutional right to abortion in Roe v. Wade. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. well, what's to stop people from turning over the first, you know, right to free speech or to bear arms at that point if we're just taking away rights? See what I'm saying? Well, I don't think that we should ever have a right see what I'm to force ourselves upon another human being and take their life. So if that's a constitutional right, and honestly, abortion is not really a constitutional right. It was sort of looped in under the right of privacy. But um, the Constitution doesn't say anywhere that a woman has a right to have an abortion. Well, I don't know about that. Um, we'll have to look that up afterward. But uh, let me ask you this. Is there any scenario in which you believe that abortion or termination of a pregnancy would be permissible? Would you make any exceptions? No. Not even, I mean, most, so th th you're pretty radical then in that point of view, because even a lot of people on the right wing would make exceptions for, you know, rape, incest, and health of the mother, of course, which, you know, makes up a, a, a large portion of abortions performed. You wouldn't have any exceptions for those? No. In fact, uh, the overwhelming majority, about 97% wow. of abortions wow. take place because of convenience. Wow. So um, only about 3% of women who have abortions... Wow claim that they're having an abortion because of their life or health and uh, because of rape or incest. In fact, uh, the majority of women who do conceive from rape actually choose to parent their children. A very small percentage actually choose abortion. Well, so, yeah, but see, they make that choice. You would remove that choice. So if a woman is, let's say, raped, let's say in a place like West Virginia or Oklahoma, you know, uh, red states, do you think you would force that woman, that w girl, to carry a rapist baby? I'm not forcing her to do anything, but uh, I'm just simply saying you shouldn't have a right to kill another human being. Um, well, you are forcing her to carry that rapist baby. If you're not allowing her to have an abortion, you're forcing her to carry the child. I'm not forcing her. So well, then she can. The only, I mean, the only act of force that's been carried out upon her is the actual rape, and I don't believe that one act of violence should then be returned with another act of violence, which is exactly what abortion is. 
So what would you do? What would you say to someone who's a victim of, of incestuous rape who wants to terminate the pregnancy? Uh, you're, you're, since you're against it, no one else can have the right to freedom of choice. Um, so what would you say to that person? She's sitting right here, right in front of you right now, but you know, she had the courtesy to turn off her iPhone. She's sitting right there. Um, what would you tell her? Sorry, sorry you were raped by your, you know, by your uh, goony brother, but that's, we overturned Roe v. Wade. That doesn't seem compassionate for someone who seems to care about life. What about the life of the mother? Yeah, I, I hear that, Skylar, I do. Um, but here's the thing. Um, there are actually studies that have been done on this. Um, and what they have found is that women who conceive from rape um, actually fare better, far better emotionally if they choose to place the child for adoption or choose to parent. So as a person who considers herself pro-woman, and really someone who Could have fooled values me. <laughs> women right. and speaks up for women, mm -hmm. uh, I sure. can't in good conscience tell a woman that it's in her best interest to have an abortion, not when all the data out there says that by her having an abortion, she will not do well emotionally, she will suffer great trauma, and that she will essentially be having to heal from yet another traumatic incident in her life. So, I mean, if I'm a person who says I'm really going to support women, I don't want to support them being re-traumatized by abortion after something as heinous as rape. Well, we can both agree it's heinous. So if you're saying that the, uh, the outcomes are better for women who are raped to carry the child, sounds to me like, well, why stop rape? I mean, they're doing be they're doing better by your logic, right? They're doing better if they're raped to have a baby. So what's what's the difference? Well, I don't think they're doing better than women who haven't been raped. Oh, you're just saying they're doing better than women who've been raped and have abortions performed? Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I'd be curious to see that data. Here's something that's important to me. What's the difference, for example? Let's do a thought exercise. This baby, right, this fetus, this zygote, is entirely dependent on the mother, right? There's no sure. possible chance at viability. Uh, so what's the difference between, let's say, a mother not uh, properly caring for the baby, not properly, let's say, maybe she's malnourished, or she uh, doesn't take prenatal vitamins, right? Is that considered, uh, at that point, would that be considered murder in your eyes? Because the idea here is, listen, this baby is completely dependent on the mother. It's not a viable human being outside of the womb. So again, it comes to this idea of forcing women to take care of effectively what is a parasite. I think we have to look at it a different way. I think we want women to take care of themselves. So if a woman is malnourished, then we need to look at what's happening in her life because that's not only affecting the life of her baby, but that's affecting her life. So I'm not really sure even in the end what that has to do with abortion because if a woman is not eating, if she's starving to death, then we want to make sure that we are taking care of her and that will in turn take care of her child. Right, but the point here is we're kind of getting to the argument of viability. That baby is not viable without the mother. So, um, where do we, where does the well, government- my baby, yeah, I have, a, I have a 12 week old and I can tell you, he can't live without me either. Well, he can breathe on his own, right? He has, of course he needs to be cared for but that's difference from, there's a difference between that and actual uh, viability, the ability to survive merely outside of the womb. Basic primary functions, you know, central nervous system, the ability to breathe, developed lungs. Uh, that's not the case with these zygotes to which you're referring. Does that not enter into the equation at all, viability, to define a, a human being, or uh, at least as it relates to rights? I mean, the mother who is viable, should her rights not matter at that point? Even though she's a viable human being on her own, she has to take care of an unviable human being because Abby Johnson says so? Well, I mean, viability is not really that important to me. I mean, it either is a innocent human life or it's not. And uh, whether it's viable or not, I mean, that's sort of a moot point. Uh, we have a responsibility to take care of humans uh, that are in our care, 
Um, I have a responsibility to take care of my eight children. Um, I have a responsibility to care for my children when they are in the womb. Um, and viability really is such a, it's so subjective because as medical science continues to advance, viability, the weeks that determine viability continue to decrease. So, you know, even 30 years ago, a baby that was born at 30 weeks gestation would have a very, very difficult time surviving um, at 30 weeks. Now we've got babies being born alive at 21, 22 weeks that are surviving outside of the womb. So we can't really dictate what's moral or immoral based on medical science that continues to advance. Well, I do think it has somewhat of an effect. Let me, uh, let's do another thought experiment here. Uh, let's say there were a fire at a fertility clinic, right? And you could rescue a kid in the, the waiting room or a bunch of test tube embryos. Sure. So who, would you rescue the test tubes or would you rescue the child first? Well, these sort of hypothetical situations are, are really cute. Um, and they're I don't think they're cute. To, I don't, they're not they're, meant to do anything. I was trying to say, what, are you saying that uh, yeah, they're meant there's an to equivalency? They're create a, an emotional reaction. Um, I get that, but I get that you're not answering. The, I get that you're not answering the question. So you would save the you would save the uh, the, the tubes before the listen, uh, child. Listen, take a puff on your vape. Listen to me. Not rescuing someone. I don't like what I'm hearing, but I will. Yeah, sure. Um, it's not the same as directly killing them. Okay, so there's really a false equivalence there. Um, so here's here's a here's a thought experiment for you, Skylar. So uh, let's say there was a fire, and you had to choose between saving your own child, which I doubt you have, but let's pretend that you do, um, and saving a black child that's not yours. Which one would you save? Um, well, first off, you know what they say about assumptions: it makes an ass out of you yeah. and me. But in this case, yeah just you because I would save the black child first <laughs> listen I can do this all day I've been answering que I've, I answered your question course, which is more than I can say for say, of course you would save your own child first that's what we are innately created to do to protect our own children to protect those that we love so of course we're going to do that that's not wrong but that doesn't make you a racist for not saving the black child does well, it or no or i'm not a, i'm not a racist because i saved the black child in your hypothetical okay, okay yeah sure i would save yeah. i would save uh all the black children frankly sure. before i got down the line to my kid yeah okay. but i don't want to have kids because listen i think we already have a climate that's too unstable uh as it stands right now so uh but i understand you have like what you're like you have 12 or 15 kids. Oh, I'm a cute breeder, breeder central right here. Yeah. Right. So many kids. My carbon footprint is like, whoa. And you think that's responsible just because some, some, some guy in a, in a, in Italy t says that you can't use a Jimmy hat. Oh, but I don't like using them. Well, listen, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't want to go into your personal preferences. I don't know. I need to know if there's like some kind of a weird, Vietnamese hammock in your closet somewhere, though, in my experience, the people who tend to be the most reserved, uh, conservative, who want to preserve family values have freaks. the, yeah, they do. Oh, so you're, you're freaks. acknowledging oh, that. Freaks. Yeah. 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 Total freaks. Yeah. So maybe all of this is really freaks. just, yeah. Maybe all this is just stemming from the fact that you personally want to, um, justify, uh, your, uh, preferences, your freakishness, as you're saying, and maybe it's not really rooted in science as you were trying to say earlier. Oh, it's totally rooted in science. Well, listen, I would save all the black children first, so I don't know. I mean, I think that says more about you than it says about me, uh, honestly. Um, let me ask you this. So you consider yourself, I know I've heard, we've heard the moniker a lot, right, pro-life, because everyone goes, well, sure. I'm pro-life and I'm not pro-death. Yeah. Uh, so are you pro-life after the baby's born or just before? This is something I always have a problem with, with the pro-life right. community. Because you, you want to think that we're pro-birth, Yeah. right? 
Well, look, yeah. after the baby's born, do you support things like uh, socialized health care? How about education? How about free nannying? How about paternity leave and maternity leave and zeternity leave? What do you support after the baby's born? Or is it just, hey, listen, we made sure that the mom didn't have a choice while you were you know, behind the birth canal, but now you're on your own. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm definitely pro-life before and after birth. So um, I I do support women um, and their their children. We have, in fact, the pro, I feel like the pro-life movement are uh, probably we're probably the largest organization helping the largest group of people helping uh, children who are born and. I mean, we have pregnancy centers. We're providing care for many women and children. We have maternity homes that provide housing. Uh, we have centers that provide resources, diapers, and things like that. You know, you won't ever walk into a Planned Parenthood and find a store for moms where they can get diapers. So I'm sort of wondering, like, why it is that if they say they, they are for women making choices, why they don't help support women who make the choice for life oh, i think they have the choice to not terminate a pregnancy but then they're infringing on another woman's choice to go into a planned parenthood you know and seek the uh the assistance of a professional of a medical professional versus you know a volunteer army who hand out free diapers from the back of a news van a news van you know, they've seen these pro-life vans that go around and they do these free ultrasounds for women. I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't put that on par with the ability uh, of a doctor, an OBGYN, at Planned Parenthood to actually provide women's health services. You know, every, not just termination of pregnancy, by the way. It's a small portion of Planned Parenthood's proceeds, sure. as you well know. Um, and uh, that's why I think these organizations are very important. And the pro-life community is, is crippling women's health care in general, which, again, would lead me to suggest an anti-choice. You know. Yeah. You know, that would be true if it were actually OBGYNs that were providing care for women inside of Planned Parenthood, but they're not. Um, in fact, I was the director of a Planned Parenthood, and I'm not a nurse or a doctor or anything. I mean, I don't, I'm not even a medical assistant. I don't have any sort of medical credential, but I was running the whole dang place. So, um, maybe that's you why know, you were women, fired. No, no, no. Wasn't fired. Um, but, you know, it's interesting because that is a, a lie, a myth that, that goes around about Planned Parenthood that they have all of this high quality health care. And the bottom line is that the only thing that they provide that would be difficult for a woman to receive at another health care facility with actually better care would be abortion. I mean, you can get a woman can get a pap smear anywhere she wants and well come not on to it's mention. not just pap smear or abortion contraceptives mammograms these are things no mammograms. That, what are you saying no mammograms there's no planned parenthood in the country that has a mammogram machine yes mammograms they do have mammogram machines no no mm -mm, no we actually did a, a FOIA request freedom of information act I'm not sure if you're familiar with that you may have to look it up but um there's uh we actually did a FOIA request because in order to run a mammogram machine, you have to have a license to run that machine. So we looked in every state who has licenses for these mammogram machines and shockingly or not so shockingly, Planned Parenthood doesn't have any. Well, they can refer you to a place that does at the very least. Sure, yeah, I can refer somebody to a place that does. No, you would need to be a medical professional to refer to some, no, somebody. Mm -mm, to. No, it actually, the law states that you don't have to receive a referral from a medical professional to get a mammogram. Oh, I just, uh, I, I find this hard but to you believe. Should probably look it up. You should yeah. probably look that up. I find this hard to believe that everybody else, you know, we know this, that we've had uh, people talking about, obviously, Planned Parenthood and the women's health that they provide, uh, including mammograms, and Abby Johnson has figured something out that everybody else missed. Oh, I don't think everybody else missed it. I mean, in fact, Cecile Richards, the pre the former president of Planned Parenthood, had to admit in congressional testimony that they don't provide mammograms. So actually, I feel like maybe you've just missed it. No, I don't think that I've missed anything at all. You know, I think that you framed this, and, I've, you know, you're very clever with this. You framed it in that you just don't think a woman has a right to, assuming that someone goes on with your idea that mere DNA defines a human being. You've sort of 
created this dynamic of a woman doesn't have a right to terminate another person's life. But the fact is, this life is dependent on that woman, right? We sort of covered viability. This is very similar to forcing a woman to donate a kidney or forcing a woman to take care of uh, another human being that she didn't sign up to take care of. There isn't any kind of a contract. That's, so you are forcing that woman to take, uh, pro, to take proactive actions uh, in, in caring for another human being, right? So either way, you say, well, she can't proactively kill a human being. Well, I'm saying you can't proactively force a woman to give her plasma and her, her life force to another human being. Why well, do you feel comfortable forcing a woman to do that? Yeah, I like the kidney analogy. That's good. I don't. I don't think that it's. I don't think you're quite there with it though, because I, I think the reality would be if someone chose to donate a kidney, and then the the comparison that you're trying to make would be then if they said, "Never mind, I'm going to take my kidney back," because every time that a person engages in sexual activity aside from rape you are making the conscious decision to embark upon possible consequences that could mean creating life so if you're not okay with that I mean, there really is a, a simple solution. I mean, it's your action that led to the creation of a human being. So if you don't want to be held responsible for that action, then don't commit that action. So you would support then free subsidized birth control uh, and contraceptives for everyone out there then to reduce the uh, amount of unwanted pregnancies? Well, you know, it's interesting that you bring that up because when I first left Planned Parenthood, I remember thinking that was the answer. But, you know, when you look at the Guttmacher Institute, which is essentially Planned Parenthood's research arm, um, they've actually shown that 54% of women who get abortions were using contraception at the time that they got pregnant. So clearly the answer isn't just simply birth control because I mean if you look at what this means is if you look into a waiting room an abortion clinic waiting room more than half of those women were contracepting and they're there pregnant and and waiting to get an abortion so I'm not sure that contraception is actually the solution I think that we need um, I mean we really need to be talking to people about self-control we need to educate people about their bodies um, but I just don't think that birth control is actually this this solution that everybody wants it to be. It's a multi-pronged approach, and by that same token, I could say, well, listen, yeah, that means that over that close to half of those people weren't using contraception because of a lack of quality education and because of the religious rights abstinence-only education. Right? I don't understand how you don't want abortions, but. You don't want to take all these actions that would reduce the abortions, free contraceptives, uh, education uh, that let people know about how to use contraceptives properly. It seems like the only problem you have is when it comes to abortion, you seem more passionate about limiting choice of women than actually helping them prevent unwanted pregnancies. Yeah. I'm super passionate about not killing innocent human beings. That's true. So then why wouldn't you be as passionate about preventing that scenario from even occurring? It seems to me that that's something a lot of people on the right don't. It's, it's, it's not really, um, I don't know how you justify that. Well, as I just told you, birth control is not the solution to this problem as Planned Parenthood and the Guttmacher Institute have already shown us. I think that we do need better education. I would definitely agree with that. Um, but, you know, telling a woman, well, the problem is yours, don't get pregnant, here's some birth control, is really not what we should be telling women. That's um, really shirking, it's allowing men to shirk their responsibility um, that they have. And I mean, I just don't really think that that's something that we want to promote, is it? I mean... Well, I, uh, first of all, I, you know, as a man, uh, I mean, I don't think that men should be involved in this decision at all, right? If they have penis, no oh. opinion. Yeah. So you don't. So you don't support Roe v. Wade, then? Uh, no, I do. Yeah. Okay, but 
but you know that all the justices that decided Roe were were men, right? I do see your point. Yeah, I see your point with the wordplay there. But I'm talking about the man involved in the action of creating that that uh, fetus, that zygote. Once it's no woman's body, right? She's the incubator. The guy has nothing to do with it. So. No penis, no penis. I mean, he did have a contribution to that life. I mean, albeit sometimes small and, and a short contribution, but there was a contribution made. Yeah, but now the contribution is out of his hands and it's in the woman's. I just think only women should have an opinion on this issue. I don't think it's right for men to step in and tell women what she can do with her body. I mean, no. it seems to me, I don't know why you would be against that as a woman. It doesn't mean, I don't understand. You think that a man should be able to tell you what you can do with your body or not? It's not that's weird. Actually, I think I think that I think that fertility is always shared because again, I'm sorry, your 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 Skype caught out at that last second. What was that? Oh, I said I believe that that fertility should be shared between a woman and a man because of science. I can't create human life on my own. Well, you can create life now without men because of, uh, to go back to your point earlier, medical advancements. And I think that's probably where we're, that's probably where we're headed considering how toxic, um, and I, I'm willing to admit this, that's the same reason I would save a black child before my own child. White people and men have contributed a very uh, toxic culture to this entire discussion. So yeah, I think hopefully, hopefully we can be progressive enough that that's where we're headed. Final question here, we do have to get going. It's Abby Johnson, uh, unplannedfilm.com is available now. And I know with this film, you focus a lot on sort of ultra late term abortions because that scares people a lot, but it's less than 1% of abortions. Um, do you think that's maybe misleading or dishonest from the fact that the vast majority of abortions occur at a point where most people would support it? Well, I mean, that's true. It, a late-term abortion is a, a small percentage. It ends up being around anywhere between uh, 15 and 18,000 abortions a year that are taking place uh, in, in the later weeks of, of pregnancy, which is still a lot. I mean, 15 to 18,000 late-term babies being killed. I mean, that that's a lot. And to your point, these babies are viable, could live outside of the womb, which, I mean... Right. I like think that's, well, I think that's so, why you use them as an example, because you think it's more effective, but it's, it's, a, it's a red herring. But for me, I mean, actually, my story is about an abortion that took place in thir- at 13 weeks in the first trimester. So... Um, I mean, in a way, Skylar, I would agree with you because I don't think that I don't think that the pro-life movement should be specifically saying, oh, well, late term abortion is ultra heinous because realistically, first trimester abortion is is just as heinous. I mean, if we as pro-lifers believe that life is life, then in the end, it really doesn't matter what week that child's life is terminated. Um, it's all wrong. So final question was, we take the totality of, of abortions, of terminated pregnancies. Um, let's say you had your way and these hadn't been performed, right? And let's assume that women didn't go and get back alley uh, abortions, which is what they would do. Uh, sure. But let's assume that's not the case. Who takes care of these millions of babies, of unwanted babies in this scenario? I mean, you're talking about millions of people at this point into the population. You don't have people to care for them. You know, it's interesting, actually. We passed a law in Texas um, a few years ago that required teenagers to have parental consent before they could get an abortion. And, we, you know, we didn't really know what the, oh, what the sound, staff... You sound very proud of that, Miss Pol Pot. Yeah, su- super, super proud. And, um, you know... We were trying to look at the numbers later, and what we found was that not only we knew that the the number of abortions would decrease, but what we were surprised at is that the actual number of teen pregnancies in the state decreased. And I think one of the reasons was because these these girls knew that they were not going to have the easy solution of abortion if they got caught and they ended up getting pregnant. So these girls ended up making more responsible decisions. So I think that we we sort of, I think it's sort of a, a multi-pronged approach here that when you pass laws, it also restricts behavior. 
So it's not just the consequence of that behavior, but I think it causes people to look and to say, well, I don't have this option, so maybe I won't participate in this action. So you control um, them that's... through fear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you control them with fear. Um, yeah. Or just making people, you know, take personal responsibility for their actions. That. Sure. Um, yeah, you and, and Mussolini. Then, uh, Okay, I'll let you finish, and then and then I would like to hear your closing thoughts because we do have to get going. But yes, continue. Sure, yeah. Um, but then also, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that there would be women who would go and and have dangerous, you know, dangerous abortions. Um, but that's not a reason to keep something legal. I mean, drinking and driving is illegal, and people still continue to drink and drive. We're not going to say, well, because some people do it, we're going to allow drinking and driving to be legal. And not to mention that there are a million families waiting to adopt children. And a lot of adoption agencies have actually had to close in the past few years because they have so many families waiting, but no babies to actually adopt out. All right. Well, that's a whole discussion for another day. So uh, in closing here, I want to give you the floor on plannedfilm.com if you're still interested in that. Um, what is uh, What would you want people to most know about uh, yourself or about the pro-life movement, your final case, I guess, as it were? Sure. So um, if people want to know more about me, they can go to abbyjohnson.org, A-B-B-Y johnson.org. Um, if they want to know more about the film, they can go to cunplanned.com. You can purchase the film there. You can also pur purchase a digital download. It is streaming on Amazon. Um, and, you know, I just want people to uh, be encouraged. We've had huge victories over the past few days. Planned Parenthood was just uh, in a in a recent verdict. They were required to pay three million dollars to a former one of their former employees, one of their former directors, because they were doing a lot of really terrible things that she exposed. Um, and so that's come out in the media that we released that yesterday. Um, also, Trump just recently took Planned Parenthood out of the Title X funding program. Um, we're seeing a decrease in abortion rates across the country. So, you know, good things are happening. Now's not the time to let our guard down. Uh, we need to keep moving forward. So there you go, folks. Uh, Title X, Donald Trump defunding uh, women's, uh, the biggest women's health care provider in the United States, and they've been forced to pay somebody out a disgruntled employee. Abby Johnson sees these as victories, very reminiscent of uh, when they strolled on in through Poland in the 1940s. Uh, Abby Johnson, thank you for taking the time. I appreciate it, and I'll see if people are convinced. Yeah, thanks, Turton. All right, thanks. This has been uh, Devil's Advocate. I'm your host, Scarlett Turden, and I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you next time. I don't know how much longer I can do this. Is that just CBD or is it THC or not? Hey, if you like this video, you should be ashamed of yourself and don't subscribe or hit the notification bell because this isn't my channel. I'm, it's just a loner for a little bit. I don't like that I have to do this, but I want to reach more people. Um, so, you know, find me elsewhere, but don't, don't have anything to do with this channel. Vape on, bro.